We are back on Morning Line, our final segment this morning with MTSU Professor Jim Vile. And uh, Professor, let me ask you this, just uh, I see there's still a challenge that I don't fully understand from the state. The courts have already upheld the fact that, you know, because of the pandemic, they're going to make voting by mail available to all Tennesseans if they choose to go that route. And they want to limit it only to seniors. And I'm not sure, I guess they have their reasons. It might be a cost or a uh, process reason. Why, why, why do you think the state doesn't want that to be available to everyone, you know, at this time during the pandemic? There are arguments, I don't think that's particularly persuasive, but there are some who believe that the more, the more such voting you have, the greater chance there would be a fraud you know, people stealing others' ballots or, or, or that sort of thing. One concern that I have as a political scientist that I haven't actually uh, seen raised this year is, you know, the elections, several of our last elections in the Electoral College have been quite close. And particularly, you may remember, I believe it was in the 2000 election, but it may have been one subsequent where we didn't actually get the totals the final totals from, I believe it was either the state of Washington or Oregon until about three weeks after the election. Yeah. And I, I would hate to have, you know, I would hate for there to be something that we would have to wait so long before everything came in that we would have a greater period of, of uncertainty. All right, as far as the voting, and yeah, you're absolutely right. There is no evidence whatsoever that there is a greater degree of fraud from voting than there might be with regard to any other kind of voting going on right now. But um, it, it, the, the idea of that is, do you think in general, if there is voting by mail, that that would increase voter turnout or decrease voter turnout? I, I guess, I can't imagine it decreasing. Well, I think part one of the arguments for voting by mail in this election is that without it, we're likely to have decreased turnout simply among those who are fearful to be outdoors and it, you know, or you know, to be in the company of other people with the virus going on. If you remember, you know, there was sort of a snafu in in Atlanta just a week or two ago in their primary election where people at least in one district were waiting two or three hours, you know, in very long lines. And particularly if you're in, you know, a high risk category, you know, somebody with asthma or, you know, someone who's elderly or with pre-existing conditions, uh, I would see voting by mail in this case as a way of simply equalizing the playing field for people who might not otherwise, you know, be able to take the risk. Oh, I agree. And aside from just equalizing the playing field during a pandemic, my take is I'm in favor of anything that increases um, individuals' ability to vote. And we know there are some folks that have issues getting to a polling place. So I'm wondering, even if after this pandemic passes and we've done maybe one or two voting cycles by mail this week, if you think it, it might remain after the fact. And because I like the idea of voting by mail um, because I think it, it, it expands the pool of folks who will be available to vote. Sure. You know, there are other mechanisms, too. It's, you know, long been suggested that we could either have, and particularly in a pandemic, this might be appropriate to, you know, have voting spread out over two or three days or move it to a weekend or, you know, to a time uh, when more people might be able to do it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm with you. Generally, you know, the more people that we can get to participate, uh, the more likely, you know, the, the results are to reflect the, the, the will of the people. Yeah, exactly that way. And again, uh, we talked about this a while back when we didn't know how everything was going to develop. I mean, is there the potential that, uh, you know, presidential election day would be postponed or pushed back? It seems like things are in the works to, to definitely make sure that that's not going to happen. You said all along you could not imagine that happening. But uh, depending on how bad it gets, what do you think? You know, if we, if we could have a vote during the Civil War, and we can vote during World War One and World War Two. Surely, especially with it, you know, think about it. You know, I'm here on television right now through the wonders of, I mean, tech, television itself is technology. But you know, up till a couple months ago, I would always come to your station. You know, now I'm doing. If we can do, we can make arrangements like this. Surely, we can figure out a way uh, to allow people to vote. 
Oh, I would agree. I would agree. Let's take a phone call from Ron. Ron, good morning. Hi, Ron. Yeah, we've been voting by mail since the Civil War. The military has, mm -hmm. and it's the most yeah. uh, uh, best uh, policy. But uh, there's two states in the United States that allows prisoners to vote. And don't you think that uh, people, um, just because they're put in jail for minor crimes or for any crime, as far as that's concerned, shouldn't, they still should have their right to vote. Uh, people that are in jail, um, their right to vote shouldn't be taken away from them. That should be an inevitable right that goes with everybody. And there's two states that uh, go to the jails and uh, allow the prisoners to vote. And I think all 50 states should do the same. We're losing a world of votes, but, and because they're criminals, doesn't mean their uh, their right to vote should be taken away from. Well, I I agree with him to an extent. Can you tell me how that works? First of all, I don't know what the two states are. Tennessee is obviously not one of them. Um, now we know if you're a convicted felon and things like this, you have a lot of your rights taken away. And when you go to prison, that's part of it. Your rights go away. Maybe the vote. Certainly you then cannot own a weapon. Those types of things. Now I know many who have gotten out of jail and have had it expunged, right, Dr. Vial, can then get the ability back to vote again. Now, yeah, actually one of the first articles that I wrote yeah. many, many years ago was on, it was not so much on people who were incarcerated at the time, but especially for ex felons you know, people who had served their time. And the only exception that I could actually think of was if someone is in jail for having voted fraudulently, that might be a cause for saying, yeah. you know, if you used it once, then we're not going to take the chance that you're going to do it again. But, you know, I think there's general perception that, especially for ex felons, especially for people who have served their time, right? And back in the, you know, it's it, it's a little bit like going to church and I, I don't know, going to the market. It's a way of participating in civil society, and we want people to do that. Sure. We don't want them alienated on the sidelines. No, I couldn't agree with you more. And I wasn't sure. I mean, I know Ron was referencing, I, I guess, I don't know what those two states are, but there's places where they actually go into, well, while they're still incarcerated and allow them to vote. I wasn't aware of that. I, I, I'm just not... Yeah, I, I'm, on not, that. I'm not aware of that. Either, okay, so I'm but, just, it's, but I'm in agreement with him outside of once they're locked up. When you're locked up, your freedoms in general are taken away. So if you take away your right to vote and other things, hey, that's part of your punishment. But once you've served your time and you get out, I honestly don't, except for that one exception, which was interesting that you just said, if you were caught for voter fraud, maybe you shouldn't be able to vote again. But I don't care if you were busted for grand theft auto. If you did your time and you've you've served it and you're out now and back in society, I see no good reason why you should not be able to vote. I agree. Yeah, oh, okay, Mary Elena just uh, checked on that. Maine and Vermont are the two states that do allow what Ron was just talking about. Thank you, Mary Elena. But um, I don't know if there's a movement that way. I do know, for instance, I don't know if you saw this, rapper Snoop Dogg <laughs> said that uh, I guess he had had a, a felony on his record um, that maybe has since been expunged, but that was years ago. And he said he has not voted for years. And one reason he hadn't, he was under the impression he couldn't. But it had been expunged, and he said, I discovered that I can vote. And yes, for the first time in his life, he is going to vote this next presidential election. Well, so, somebody who shows up at the poll might get a thrill. If, if yeah. it were me, I'm not even sure yeah. I'd recognize him. You may not recognize him, but my point is... A lot of people, it yeah. would be a thrill. Yeah, my, I do get the sense, maybe, in presidential elections, Dr. Vial, Professor Vile, or something that... Uh, draw out the highest voter turnout in general. But I do think, yes. I do think that this upcoming presidential election is going to have a ton of people coming out to vote. A ton on both sides for both candidates, but more than maybe we've seen in a while. That, that's just my sense, at least where we sit right now. You know, there, there are political scientists like to talk about realigning elections at about once every generation there's an election that will often change party identification for the next 20 years. You know, to, to some extent, the election of Obama was sort of a, a watershed because he's the first African-American. Last election was, be, you, know, you know, because you had the first woman running for a major party. But I think you're right. I think a lot of people 
perceive this election as being more consequential than you know sort of the general run of the mill election it will be interesting professor vile thank you so much for joining us today all right it's You're always welcome. always good to see Glad you to sir you. we'll do it again you take care thank of yourself you. Thank we'll you. All right. Uh, Professor John Vile from MTSU. We're going to take a break. When we come back, programming note about tomorrow right after this.